Tonight, big boys, 4A, 5A. That's what we're talking about. That's what we've got going on. And let me just make sure it's live before I, before I pull this up here. Are we live, John? Are we still live? I think so. We're still live? We're still live? Yes. Okay. John, let's go into 4A lower state playoffs here. Kind of give a game-by-game game breakdown, game-by-game game, uh, matchup. Kind of kind of some, some pointers here on each one. So we start with the, the one seed in lower state. We've got Lower Richland, the one seed out of Region 4 at 6-4, and four, taking on Marlboro County, a program that has fallen quite a bit, John. They're an at-large seed at 2-8. and eight. Next matchup we have is Airport, a two seed at 7-3, taking on Colony County at 3-7. and seven. Here's the proverbial, proverbial number one team in the state. Everybody loves this team here, John. 9-0 Myrtle Beach, number one seed, taking on Lakewood at 4-6. and six. Next matchup here, we've got a personal favorite of mine, North Augusta Yellow Jackets, the three seed out of three seed out of Region Five at three, or excuse me, at five and five, taking on North Myrtle Beach at five and four. Brooklyn KC, the one seed out of that Region Five, uh, seven and three, actually gets a bye. You'll see, as we mentioned here, uh, there's a couple kind of weird, uh, weird four A things here happening as well, with two teams getting a bye. That actually happened because two regions, uh, I'll, I'll remember which ones they were in a second, actually didn't apply for an at-large berth, so. Uh, for some reason, they're, they're just two teams get a bye. It's just funny how that works out. One of them being Brooklyn KC. We'll then see Hilton Head at uh, five and four taking on Wilson at eight and two. Beaufort at four and five, only one seed gets also gets a bye, which I feel like if you're four and five and you're getting a bye, you are a yeah, lucky you. dog there. <laughs> and then Hartsville, a two seed at seven and three, will take on South Aiken, a four seed at two and eight. John, what are some of your first thoughts? Uh, first thoughts on, on this lower half of the four A bracket. You know, two things kind of jump out at me here. I think, first off, Myrtle Beach is far and away the favorite. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're the number one team in the state. And you look at the, the lower half of the bracket, the next highest rated team is Hartsville at the bottom of the bracket, coming in at sixth in the state. But North Myrtle Beach is, I think, a team to watch out for. I know they've lost four games this year, but they've got them. Very, very good quarterback, and when you have a very good quarterback, I mean, a elite-level quarterback, I think he's a four-star prospect, mm -hmm. um, a lot of good things can happen for you. And I think, you know, that could be the toughest. I think more Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach will meet again. I think uh, that could be their toughest. I'm going to say, John, North, North Myrtle Beach is going down round one. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you. I don't want to burst your bubble. They're not beating the Yellow Jackets uh, tomorrow night, so just going to go ahead and put that out there. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, that's a good matchup there. I mean, you see – you see, so like I said, some really good matchups here. You see a team like North Augusta, North Beach would be really a ball game. I think, I think Wilson as a three seed is going to pull the upset over also over Hilton Head Island, the two seed there. I mean, just look at their records, John. It's eight and two and five and four. That Wilson program uh, has some big wins this year. Beat a couple big schools down there in the Florence area. I think they're going to pull an upset. Um, besides that, you know, I think the first round is going to stay pretty chalk, uh, in, in my opinion. There, I think. You know, Marlboro County shouldn't have much for the Lower Richland. Airport should cruise over Colorado County. Myrtle Beach is going to cruise. North Augusta, Myrtle Beach, and North Augusta and North Myrtle Beach will be a good ball game, I think, there. And then, like I said, Wilson upsetting them, and I think Hartsville is going to cruise as well. You know, I think we don't see a lot of upsets here in round one of the lower half of 4A. Right, but, you know, like I said, I think we could we could see some close games. I mean, North Augusta is famous for playing close games. That's right, right yeah. Right. So you expect a good game there, and, you know, I think uh, – even a, a Hartsville South Lake could, could be a tough I don't game. know. South Lake um, is pretty bad, John. <laughs> but, you know. It, it could be. You know, that, you know that Hartsville has dropped a little bit. That's I, mean, a team, I know they're too, but they've dropped a little they bit. They went to, to lower state final last year, but they had some you know some transfers. The K Park kid left them to yeah, go to IMG. Yeah. Uh, they had some, some graduation from last year that really hurt them. That's a good program. You know, I, I think my favorite, John, in this lower state bracket, if, like we're not looking at Myrtle Beach, I was in the Myrtle Beach is the favorite. I think a team. I think Brooklyn KC has got to be my second favorite. I know they're one seed. That's not really a shocker to anybody there. But that team played some, some tough teams all year. That's a tough region down there at Region 5. And to come out victorious out of that, including a, a big win over Airport just last week to clinch the region title, this team's hot at the right time. I think they're going to meet up with Myrtle Beach uh, in the quarters, in the actually, excuse me, in the lower state final. That could be. That's so anything else you want to go into here in our lower state matchups, John? Um, anything that you see – Maybe happening in round two that really excites you? Uh, you know, you, obviously you look at the Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach possible matchup in the second round is really, really exciting if that happens. And then 
if North Augusta pulls the upset, that makes that matchup pretty exciting. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, if North Augusta can can uh, get that get that win there. Um, other than that, you know, I think if Wilson can knock off Hilton Head, and I, I expect that they will. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I agree too. with you there. I think they're just the better team. Um, Wilson, Brooklyn, Casey in the cage. That would be a fun game. <laughs> that would. That would be very exciting. Very exciting. So, John, like I said, who is your favorite? I know I think you're going to say Myrtle Beach. Who's your maybe your second favorite out of that lower state for a bracket? My favorite's Myrtle Beach, but I would pay very, very close attention to their second round game. I think if okay. they can get tripped up, it's going to be in that second round game. Be it North Myrtle Beach, who I think would win that game, or if North Augusta can pull that upset, um, mm-hmm. you know, they'll, they'll have a lot of momentum coming into that game. Yeah, that's one thing, you know, you mentioned North Augusta. I mean, they're known for playing close games. If they can get Myrtle Beach in a dogfight, who knows how they're going to respond because they haven't played a lot of tough games either with that. I mean, they blew a lot of teams out also. So, interesting to see what the Doty kid would do there in round two. Um, let's move on to Upper State 4A here. A few more of the, the local teams that we know that everybody around here knows and wants to hear about. I know Aunt Amy and, and Martha want to hear about it. I see Randy and Brett and Haley. And thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. Uh, if you're fans of us on Twitter at Move and Change, thank you for migrating over this way for tonight. Uh, if you're not a fan on Twitter, go follow us on there too. We get some more updates from throughout the ball games at night uh, that we, we know you guys want to hear about. So, John, let's start with the uh, top half of of uh, Upper State. Why is it not pulling through right now? There it goes. Wait, is it not? That's not the right one? That's right. Yeah, okay. So we've got Greenville, a uh, local team here, the one seed out of Region 2 and 8-2, and two, hosting the at-large team out of Region 1, Palmetto at 5-5. Five and five. Next, we have BHP at 6-3, and three, hosting York. The number one seed out of Region 3, South Point 10-0, will host a Greer team that snuck into the playoffs with a win last Friday night at 3-7. Wren, a really good ball team, 8-2, will host Orangeburg Wilkinson at 6-4. Daniel, also undefeated, 9-0, host at-large Lancaster at 2-8. Eastside at 8-2, will host Westwood 7-3. Maybe my favorite ball game of the first round right there, John. That, That's going to be a really good That Eastside-Westwood game. AC4 at 9-1 will host Walhalla, 7-3, another good ball game. And then Ridgeview at 6-4 will host TR at 8-2. John, just you know, a quick look at the, the 4A lower state and upper state. I think the upper state first round games look awesome compared to some of those lower state games we just talked about. Well, you got seven of the top ten in the upper state. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot of bad teams in this bracket. You know, even the... Even the underdogs um, are a tough matchup, um, so I think it's going to be it's going to be pretty exciting first round games. Yeah, yeah, John. Do you see anything um, you know happening? Maybe um, anything? Ha- actually, a funny comment here from Chris Blank. You actually get to North Myrtle Beach from North or get from North Beach to, to North Augusta. That'd be a tough drive to get down there. I tell <laughs> that you what, a long trip. <laughs> you got to go with some not a straight line to get there for sure, Chris. I'll tell you that. And then Amy gets in with the Go Red Raiders. That team, in, in the one seed that we talked about, John, they can make some noise for sure. You know, here here are the games I'm looking at in the first round. You know, we talked about Eastside and Westwood. Eastside, the Skoloff kid, really good player there. They got Mangum at wide receiver. This really, they got another good receiver as well. Those guys can put up points. You know, I was surprised that they didn't win last week against Greenville. I thought they were the favorites going into that game, in my opinion. But Greenville showed up big, had a big win there over those guys to clinch that region. I think that East Side West Westwood game over at East Side is going to be a whale of ball game Friday night. Yeah. So I'll give you a, an interesting little stat here. So um, looking at playoff teams, okay, East Side this year they went two and one against okay. teams that are in the playoffs. One of those wins by Eastside, a oh, seven point win over Greer. A okay. Greer team that is in the playoffs, but struggled mightily this year. Westwood, on the other hand, four and two. More than okay. half of their schedule was against playoff competition. Um, they played South Point really tough, lost that game 31 20. They blew out a Lancaster team. Four, or actually, sorry, I'm looking at uh, South Point there. But they played South Point really tough. They knocked off York in an overtime game. Um, they beat Lancaster by two scores. Uh, and their two losses were to Ridgeview and South Point. Two yeah. really, really high-quality teams. Um, so Westwood is – they. this is no foreign territory for them. They played a ton of really good teams, good playoff teams already this year. And they come out on top in four of them. Yeah, so who are you picking there, John, out of those two? I mean, out of – the stats you just read, read, I mean, read out to us. I feel like Westwood. I'm taking Westwood. Would not be surprised. You know, and that's a team. 
I saw him knock off an undefeated North Augusta squad two years ago in the playoffs um, as a kind of, I think, an at-large team or a 5-5 five five team and knocked off an undefeated team. That team has had some athletes at that school in Columbia. I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, if they do pull this upset. I think I'm going to go with Eastside because they're at home, and I like that quarterback a lot. I think when you get into when you're in the playoffs, if you've got a good quarterback, that can really carry you. And I think for that sure. kid, uh, Skoloff, is, is going to be ready for, ready for the action Friday night. John, what about the game below that there? AC, and, AC Floor and Walhalla. You know, Walhalla put up points against everybody this year. I don't know a lot about AC Floor. What can you tell us about those guys, or do you have much on them? They did. So, AC Floor, is a, they're a good team as well. So, this is a group uh, against playoff teams. They went 3-1. and one. Okay. And the only game they lost was a, a tough game to Laura Richland, which they were probably the better team um, in that game. I, I think you could debate that either way. Um, but Walhalla, I was looking at today, and – they might be a little bit of fool's gold um, against teams in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They're just one and three. And yeah, I was going to mention that. I think when they, you know, we had them as our game of the week a couple times. I think they played Daniel and maybe Ren or another team. And they, while they scored in those games, they got blown out anyway. It didn't yeah. matter how many they scored. If they scored 35, Daniel was scoring 50, 60, whatever it was. Yeah. They weren't competitive necessarily in those ball games, um, you know, against those bigger teams. Yeah. And, you know, their one win was against. Uh, a Palmetto, a Palmetto squad hmm. who is in the playoffs. They did not beat anybody. Yeah, that's an at-large the team there. Yeah, that, I wouldn't. The score of that Wahala Palmetto game was sixty-nine to fifty-five. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Wahala they played BHP, a yep. BHP team that's good, but a little bit down this year. They yep. got blown out. They got beat forty-one to twenty yep. by BHP. Um, so while Wahala is impressive this year and has had a good year. When they lose games, you know, they lose it around 68 to 20. Um, that kind of stuff really scares me about picking Wahala. Uh, yep. They played Daniel close. They lost 41 27. Losing to a team like Daniel by two scores, that's not bad. But um, they scare me a little bit. Yep, I understand that. We got a Chris Blanton vote for Westwood over here. I think that's a good pick. Yeah, like, so I, I, agree I, like, Chris. I like the Skoloff kid east side at home there. And then the bottom game in this bracket, John, Ridgeview against Travelers Rest. By the seeding, you know, Ridgeview the two seed, TR is a three seed. But you look at the records, Ridge, Ridgeview six and four, TR eight and two. You know, in my opinion, John, I think that Ridgeview team, they're better than their record shows. You know, they play some tough games. They play they South have. Point, I think, to a 10 to 3 ball game. Correct. And I think uh, if they went on to play Dan. Well. They beat Blythewood, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Early. No, see, they lost 14 nothing to Blythewood early in the year. Um, lost to Northwestern by two points. I mean, that's played some big schools there that yeah. those guys are doing. Yeah. They've already beat Westwood and we just talked about, talked about being good. Ridgeview was a you know what they played Greer for Upper State last year is that correct I think uh, they made it deep uh, made a deep run of the playoffs for sure. I think that Ridgeview team they might embarrass TR. You know like, I love the Devil Dogs. I love where that program's headed. They've got a, you know some good players. They're going the right direction, but I don't know if they're quite ready to compete with Ridgeview yet in the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. You know TR kind of like Waha. You know we've talked uh, we've really bragged on them because they've done well comparatively. Yep. Um, you know, another program that's not historically been great. Now they've had a good year. But then we get into the playoffs, and you play a team like Ridgeview. Ridgeview has played some big dogs. Yes, um, yes. And, and they proved their worth. They, you know, they, half their schedule was against playoff teams. They went 3-2. and two. Um, You know, there are two losses to South Point and Daniel. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a pretty impressive track record. They beat a Lancaster team 35-9. to nine. Mm-hmm. They what I hear, John, I know that Lancaster team is at large. I've heard Lancaster is not very good. They kind of they're two and eight, so I could understand that. So I'm yeah. much stock in that yeah. one. Yeah. But yeah, um, you know, I, I think like I said, I think Ridgeview's going to pull that ball game out there. Sorry to our friends Stefan and Jarrell and our, all our TR friends there, but I don't think they're quite ready for the big time. John, I think in round two is where we're going to see some really good ball games. You know, I think that Greenville BHP game is going to be pretty good. I think um, you know one more guy I want to talk about in round one that we didn't get to yet. South Point and Greer, you know, looking at this ball game, South Point ten and zero, Greer uh, three and seven. Everybody's like, you know, no shot there. You know, John, we saw Greer to start the season against Burns. They got beat by a couple scores. The game was pretty close. You know, and it was I a lot like, closer than the score should. You know, Greer did not play great that night, and I, I know they obviously didn't play great a lot of this season. But those guys, they've got some, some defensive guys up front. The Holly kid, um, a couple other players up front on defense can make some. They can make some havoc for South Point. You know, we saw South Point play against Greenville. While they won that ball game, I was not super impressed with what the Stallions did there. No. I don't, you know, I'm not ready to call an upset Greer beating South Point or anything like that, but I don't think this this might not be quite the mismatch that people think it's going to be. 
I don't think so either. Um, you know, Greer's going to have to play well. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to be on their game for sure. But, you know, if South Point slips a little bit themselves, they could find themselves in a bit of a ball game. Yeah. You know, and I'm not sure how many. I know Greer lost a lot of talent last year. But I do know some of these kids were on that team that was very good yes. last year. Yes. So they, you know, they're going to be hungry. They're going to. They're not going to be intimidated by South Point by any means either. Yeah, and like I said, you know, like I said, we saw Ridgeview or, or saw South Point. And I just, I don't know. They just, I feel like they're missing something. I don't think that's a state championship team, John. I really don't. No, okay. no, I, I don't either. Um, okay. You know, and they, and they, you know, you look at their schedule. They, they're five. You know, they're they're undefeated, correct? Yeah, ten and up. You know, I mean, ten and up. And they played five teams. They're they're in the playoff bracket. So you know, they've played some decent teams along the way. And they beat them. They have found ways to win games, be it ugly. Mm-hmm. They have still won games. Um, but I don't see them making it all the way through. Yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. If you guys are sitting here watching us on Facebook, really appreciate it. Um, Kevin Thomas alongside John Epps here going through the uh, 4A brackets for you, uh, starting with the upper state. And now we're into the lower state. Uh, or excuse me, started lower state, now we're going to upper state action. I'm going to have a few more comments on this for you. Five. Thank you guys for tuning in. I see Chris there, Amy. Haley, Brett, Randy, um, Jay, a few other guys in there tuning in. So appreciate that. But back to the upstate, John, right quick. I want to talk about um, you know maybe some of these second and third round games here. I, I've got Greenville BHP round two. I've got South Point Wren round two. I've got Daniel Eastside and then AC Floor and Ridgeview. I think that's similar to what you've got, if I'm not correct. So if I think you've got maybe a Westwood there instead of uh, instead of Eastside. Right, right. Okay. You know, I think – that top pod there, I'm not sold on Greenville or BHP, really. You know, BHP got blown out by Rand a couple weeks ago. They did play Daniel Tough last week. I will give them that. But, you know, I feel like that BHP team, I don't think they're state championship, state championship caliber either. And I don't know about Greenville. You know, we had some harsh things to say about some of the coaching decisions the game we saw <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. But obviously they figured something out there. Eight and two. I mean, tough to, to go against those guys. Uh, we got two really good running backs. Um some really good athletes on the defensive side as well. I think Greenville is going to make it to that round three. And I think a, a whale, of, whale of ball game in round two is going to be South Point Wren. I think Wren is really, really good, John. You know, they lost to uh, they lost to Daniel. Do you know who else they lost to this year? Do you have it in your, in your stats over there? Let's see. Uh, I know they, they blew out BHP earlier this year, 55-28. to 28. Let's see if we can find out. Who that they lost to though? Um, yeah, it was Daniel. It was a close game. It was thirty four twenty eight. Yep, um, very close. That's game. the game where Daniel threw the hell Mary at the end to win. Yeah. Actually, that's yeah. right. So, that's right. Um, you know, Ren has been playing well, but you know, BHP's been another team where they've just been finding ways to win ball games. Yep. Um, yep. But you know, I think Ren South Point. Mm-hmm. I want to pick Ren there. I want to pick Ren. Yeah, because if not, I think we're looking at really a Greenville South Point rematch. If uh, if that doesn't yeah. happen. I think we're going to rematch between those two. If, but. if I was Greenville, I think I'd rather play South Point than Wren. Yeah, I think Wren would Wren might score 50 on yeah, those guys yeah. on that defense. Um, so who do you have, John, in the, in the upper state final? So I'm going to go with Daniel. I, I think from top to bottom, they're their strongest team. Um, I think where they're going to run some trouble is going to be in that second round game mm-hmm. against Westwood. Yep. I think that could be – they're uh, they're tough scheme until they get to the to the end of the bracket, but I see you know yeah. I see Daniel beating Ren in his another really really good game. Yeah, I want to comment on Daniel real quick. You know those guys made a big run last year. They knocked off South Point with the crazy two point conversion um, there late. So that was a that was a good run for those guys. The Venables kid is back at quarterback, a really good player. You know those guys have some big time players on defense. I know uh, Denise is probably watching though. She's got a, got a, got a son on the team that's been killing it. So I appreciate her following us and checking us out, but. You know, Daniel is a good program, but like you said, I think there's just more quality teams in this upper state for it than there were in the, in the lower yeah, state for Yeah, and I, I think there's just going to be a ton of really good You know, we talk about, okay, Greenville, BHP, South Point. Oh, uh, they're not that great. They're not that great. But then you, you look through their schedule, all these teams are finding ways to win yep. games. Yep. And then toward the bottom half of the bracket, you look at, you know, obviously we know Daniel's very good, number two team in the state. But then you look at, you know, Westwood and AC Floor, Ridgeview. This, these are other teams that they have found to win a lot of games themselves. Yeah. And the games they've lost, they've been very, very competitive. Yep. Um, so I think we're going to see a more of that all through. I think this is going to be, thus far, we'll see what we get to, when we get to 5A. Mm-hmm. I think the upper state 4A bracket 
could be the most exciting once we get to the, the end of it. Mm -hmm. But I think from start to finish, this upper state 4A bracket is going to be the most competitive. Yeah, Chris said he's looking forward to the South Point win game in round two and then the Daniel TR possible round Ooh, three matchup. You know, I don't know. TR game. I don't know if I see TR getting that far, Chris. Uh, I think my, my two upper state that would be fun. final teams. I'm going to go with the Shocker. I'm going to go with Wren. Um, I think we're looking at Wren Ridgeview, John. Wren I Ridgeview. I could see yeah, that. You know, it, I the like team, Ridgeview. The outlier that we don't know about is AC4. That's the team that I just don't know enough about at 4A to feel like I can make a confident call where they're on those guys. But I'm looking at Wren Ridgeview there for a matchup. And I think... I think Ridgeview is ready to get back to Columbia after kind of coming up a little bit short last year. I think that Ridgeview team is going to take on Myrtle Beach for the championship. I agree. And, and you know, I'm glad you mentioned that about Floor. So, Floor, you know, their team, they've only lost one game against mm -hmm. playoff teams. But, again, how we talked about earlier, they've played all over state competition. They beat yeah. a Beaufort team that's in the playoffs, 37-21. They blew out a Lakewood team, 34-14. And their lone loss is to a number one seed, Laurel Richland, they lost mm -hmm. thirty-two to twenty. So Flores got a pretty good track record. They've been a pretty good program the last few years. You know they could sneak up on somebody. I think uh, a Ridgeview Floor game would be pretty exciting. Um, could see that in the second round. Yes. Any other comments here on Upper or Lower State Four A, John? Before we move on to the Five A Big Boys, there. Uh, I think that's it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to these games. I think we're going to see a lot of really good close games. You know, coming down to. Fourth quarter, last possession type games. I think so. So, John Epps, Kevin Thomas here. We're all moving the chains with our 4A and 5A previews. If you guys didn't didn't tune in last night, it's on our page. It's 1, 2, and 3A uh, previews. Be sure to check that out. Uh, we posted it on a Facebook and on YouTube. And if you guys want an audio version, you can download it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, any of any of those uh, places you can get to, Anchor, any of that stuff. So, check us out. Also, give a big shout-out to our sponsor, the George Agency. These guys can help you out with any insurance needs you have. You know, whether you're a... Uh, seasonal worker or maybe a uh, hospitality worker, maybe you don't have insurance to the company you work for, these guys can help you out with life and, and health insurance at George Agency. Or maybe if you're a small business owner and you need insurance for your whole company, give Bradley and Richard and those guys a call. Check them out on Facebook, the georgeagency.net. They've been serving the insurance needs of the state of South Carolina for you know, 35 plus years, John. they got offices in Mullins and Merrill's Inlet, but yet they can service the whole state. They've got clients in Seneca, got clients in Greer, clients in Columbia, Aiken, obviously Myrtle Beach area, Dillon, Florence, wherever. They can help you guys out. So don't hesitate to call them. You know, obviously, you know, if you want to go sign up for insurance yourself, you can do that. But why not let the professionals at the Georgia Agency help you out? You know, the price doesn't change. At least but give they you can some just guidance. they yeah. can just help you out and make sure you get what you need uh, yeah. for you and your family. So give those guys a call. Also check out our sponsor, Always on Top Clothing, Always on Top Brand. If you're a Tar Heel fan, check these guys out there showing you that the Tar Heels are literally always on top of the game cost, just like they were in week one of the season. So Check out our sponsor, Always on Top. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. Order some of their cool stuff. Yes, more stuff coming out soon. But, John, anything else you want to hit up before we get into 5A? Anything else you want to comment on? I'd say the only thing um, that I'm looking at is I look at the bracket as a whole that's pretty uh, pretty interesting. So, we both expect Myrtle Beach. Yep. Probably going to make it through that lower bracket. I wouldn't necessarily say easily, but I think they'll make it through. And what they've got to be kind of excited about is looking at that upper state bracket and going, okay. Dan Daniel could be our toughest game, but man, Daniel's got to go through a lot of good competition to get to Columbia. You know, you, mm -hmm. you could see a Ridgeview get there. You could yep. see an AC4 or a Daniel, or whoever, whoever, yeah. So, you know, Myrtle Beach could be sitting there. They could get to Columbia and facing, you know, a team that is not as talented as a Daniel. Maybe, you know, they had a good game, maybe a run. Maybe it goes the other way mm -hmm. this time around. Maybe somebody gets the Hail Mary against Daniel. And they get to Columbia. So yep. Myrtle Beach, you got to be pretty excited about that. But it's also a little scary because, you know, you could be playing a team that's really hot too. Yeah, got a couple more, couple more comments from Chris. Seriously, last night was awesome. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks, man. He said, uh, Daniel should win it all this year, but he watch out for Renna South Point too. I think you're right on the butt with that. You know, those teams, all three of those upstate teams, have the potential and the uh, talent to certainly make a deep run and even win, win the whole thing in Columbia. Channel. I still think Myrtle Beach is going to win it all. Yeah, but, the, um, the Doty kid's tough to bet against. He's really good. Yeah. And, yeah. and watch one with that. I think he's going to take over for a uh, start quarterback job in Columbia next year, too. I don't think Kalinski's going to be as good as this kid. So watch out yeah. for Luke Doty uh, as the QB in Columbia here. It'll, right be a, <laughs> it'll be a hot topic this spring in Columbia with him, Ellen. Certainly will, campus. certainly will. So yeah. let's get into uh, the 5A lower state bracket. Um, John, let's be a quick one here. So, Judge Fork's going to win, and let's get out of this one. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my one comment. Judge Fork, 5A, lower state champion. Uh, actually, we'll go back into it. But, 
you know, the the number one seed, uh, the one team, the number one seed voted on by the prep riders, the prep poll is Dutch Fork, and I think for for good reason there. Yeah, for sure. They're the one seed. They're nine zero and one. They had that uh, tie to start the season against uh, Mallard Creek. You know, with that um, with the rain game, it was on ESPN right. and whatnot. They're taking on at large Chapin team. Something I thought was kind of interesting here, John, is that you know usually I feel like you see at large teams. You don't play somebody out of your out of your region, but in this matchup, right, you know Dutch Fork and Chapin are both Region Five. So I thought it was very interesting to see that they're going to match up here in uh, in Round One. I don't think it's going to be a ball game at all, but just interesting to see how that yeah. how that kind of worked out in the bracket there. Next, you'll see uh, Wando at six and three taking on Conway at three and six. Conway, the home team there, even with the <laughs> worst record. See Fort Dorchester, another undefeated squad at nine and zero, will be hosting Lexington at seven and three. Berkeley at seven and two will be hosting West Florence at six and four. Carolina Forest at nine and one will be hosting Kane Bay at five and five. River Bluff at eight and two hosts West Ashley at two and seven. Goose Creek at seven and two will host South Florence at four and six. And Somerville at six and three will host Lugolf Elgin at four and six. John, what are some of your quick uh, quick thoughts here before we kind of go into a go into a game by game breakdown here? Yeah, you know, I think uh, unfortunately this kind of looks like uh, some of the one A and two A brackets that we looked at yesterday where you have a couple teams that you're pretty mm -hmm. sure are going to meet toward the end. Um, but I think Fort Dorchester will be fun to watch as they work on through because I think Dutch Fork is, obviously they've had another extremely great season, mm -hmm. um, you know, with just, just the one tie, the minor blemish there. But I don't know that they've played a team as good as Dutch Fork all year outside of Mallard Creek. That's true. That's true. Um, so, you know, w once they come along that game, I think that could be interesting there. Um, you know, you see some perennial powerhouses um, toward the lower part of the back in Goose Creek and Somerville who still aren't quite as good as they used to be. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see if someone can, can upset them and, you know, have some new faces uh, further down the bracket. But I think when it comes down to it, the real deciding game is going to be Fort Dorchester and, uh, and Dutch Fort. Yeah, you know, I think, obviously, like I said, Dutch Fort is going to wipe the floor with Chapin. I think this second matchup here, I think we're going to see an upset. I think, um, you know, obviously, it's probably not an upset looking at the record. But Conway's going to see Dutch Fort? <laughs> no. I think we're going to see Wando <laughs> beat Conway here in round okay. one. Um, as long yeah. as they've got a good offense, they've got a really good kid in the secondary. I can't remember the guy's name. They've got a good secondary player, uh, Wando does. And as long as they can stay out of the way of, of letting just Tonka Hemingway wreck the backfield, I think Conway is going to have that's, a hard time beating Wanda. That's easier said than done. Yeah, I think uh, Fort Dorchester, we, you know, Lexington's a good team as well. I don't They're think, a very good team. I don't think Fort Dorchester's going to blow those guys out. You know, Lexington is very disciplined, very smart with the football. They're not going to turn it too. If you get behind Lexington, it's going to be hard to catch up. They're not going to do anything dumb to let you get back in it. So Fort Dorchester needs to start out hot there, get up ahead, get up ahead early and kind of cruise to victory. I think Berkeley beats West Florence. Um, I think another very good team here in the lower half is Carolina Forest with Mason Garcia at quarterback. I think it, the kid's going to is it East Carolina next year, John. I believe. I believe so. Yeah. Very good player that Mason Garcia is. I think that game is actually going on currently. See if I can find you guys a score for that Carolina Forest uh, Kane Bay game that got moved up due to the weather possibility down there at the beach. Let's see. Oh, well, here we go. Currently at half. We had Carolina Forest thirty-five, Cane Bay seven. Wow! So I think all, I'm all over that prediction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cane Bay is a is a is a team that's not ready to compete with Carolina Forest. So Carolina Forest is going to cruise into a second round matchup Ooh. there, who I think will be River Bluff at eight and two. And kind of interesting, you know, you mentioned that I forgot about the, the Garcia kid at Carolina Forest, and you say they're nine and one. Yes, nine and one. Nine and one. They're not getting a whole lot of respect from the Riders. They're seventh in the state. Yeah, uh, it's hard to believe a nine and one team, and there's six schools better than them. Yeah. Do you have their loss written down, John, by chance? Or I do not. I do not have it in front of me. Let's see. I can tell you that. But I'll kind of go into the next game here. Um, I think Goose Creek is going to be South Florence. I don't think either one of the South Florence or West Florence, either one of the Florence schools, are really going to make it out of the first round this year. And I think uh, I think it's going to make you happy. I think Lugolf Elgin is going to pull the upset over some of them. <laughs> I tell you what. That Lugolf Elgin uh, defense is tough. I think it's probably it the best solid. unit on the field that night. Carolina Forest one loss was to Myrtle Beach, 43-28. to So kind of wow. got beat by two scores there. But... They beat everybody else they played, so uh, back to Lugolf Elgin. I think they're going to pull the upset over the Green Wave. I tell you what, that would be a heck of an upset, and that would be really one of the marquee wins it, it, for that program. Um, just to have that that um, you know buck on your wall mm -hmm. of Somerville. Mm -hmm. To have that, you know, they're still pretty new to the five A game, so to have that Somerville win would be 
that'd be pretty cool. And then, you know, hey, if you can win that game, you know, a Goose Creek team that's a little bit down this yep. year, um, who knows what can happen. Maybe you can make a little run and get a little uh, – I think, if anything else, it's just get a little – get a little bit of momentum going into next year. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think that um, that Dutch Fort, Fort Dorchester game could be really good there. Um, I don't think – you know, like I said, I think – Carolina Fars is good. They may be a little bit of fool's gold as well. Yeah, they played a good 418. I was the number one 418, but they lost them by 15 points. Yeah, and that, that scares you. Not though. ideal, but I don't like anybody else that much in this lower half of the bracket is the problem there, John. <laughs> you know, the only other team, this script would still scare me, um, mm -hmm. but also River Bluff. Yeah. You know, River yeah. Bluff is a solid program. Um, you know, I, I think they could give they could give them some trouble, and that would be, that would be a second-round game. Yes, um, yes. So that that would be a good second round game right there. That'd be a uh, number seven versus number ten. Yeah, I'm gonna go though. I think for the lower state final, I'm gonna go Dutch Fork. It's hard, so hard for you against those guys. Dutch Fork taking on. I'm gonna go with. Oh gosh, who do I feel like here? Dutch Fork taking on Carolina Forest. I'm gonna stick with the chalk one on one, John. I think Mason Garcia is gonna gonna put that pull that team together. Get them there to that upper state uh, final where they will play, or excuse me, lower state final where they play Dutch Fork on the road. And I think Dutch Fork is going to win to go to the state championship in Columbia again. Okay. Um, you know, just for fun, just for fun here. Okay. There's nothing on the line. Maybe We're putting big bucks on this. Maybe <laughs> a little bit of, maybe a little bit integrity, reputation. I don't know. Um, how about I'm going to pick Fort Dorchester knocking off Dutch Fork? Whoa. Okay. That would be yeah. a heck of a shocker. You know, Fort Dorchester being Carolina Forest. And I, t I tell you what, not only would Fort, Dorch Fort Dorchester be excited about that, everybody else in the playoffs will be super excited about Very that. Much <laughs> if somebody can, can knock out Dutch Fort, the whole upper state is going to rejoice he, at once. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> here's my conspiracy theory on it. We saw a Greer team that was so good last year mm -hmm. just totally go 180 this year. Mm -hmm. um, we saw Dylan lose a region game for the first time, what, 16 years? Yeah, since 2009. Um, and also, no, yeah, 10 years, 10 years. 10 years. And then the biggest thing I have as I look in this bracket and I think about who's on this Dutch Fork team. Mm -hmm. These are a lot of kids. They were in 11th grade last year. Yeah, the old and shot kid. Graders. QB going to play baseball at Clemson. And that, I think that's going to be in these kids' heads. Yeah, you know, the Hyatt kid watching you play be, Tennessee. And I don't know if it's any of these kids are going to be early enrollees or not, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's going to be, you know, December, they might be kind of tired of football if you're thinking about college and you're thinking about where they're going to be at next. You see it in bowl games all the time with kids that are going to, you know, looking forward to the draft, mm -hmm. looking forward to getting up, getting into that. Olin Chuck's going to be looking toward baseball. Mm -hmm. um, they could have their minds a little bit off this game. Though, you know, they could win 56-7. to seven. <laughs> But I'm thinking if they lose that game, that could be why. Um, okay. And Fort Dorchester may not have those uh, distractions on their mind. Okay. They're a very, very good team. I like it. I like it. So let's uh, let's go back here, and then we'll get to the upstate here. So thank you guys for tuning in to Moving the Chains, our uh, 4A and 5A high school football playoff previews leading into tomorrow night, and actually technically tonight with that Carolina yeah, Forest game yeah. too. So hope you guys are enjoying it. I see a lot of good comments out there from Jay and Chris and, and uh, Brett's tuning in and Hunter and Tim and, and a lot of good guys are there. So appreciate it. Uh, share it. Tell your friends. Retweet it. Uh, hopefully... Help us get the word out and make the show a little big. We've got a couple things planned for you guys the rest of the playoffs, too. Maybe do a show tomorrow night, depending on what happens with the weather-wise. And maybe have a couple more midweek previews for you going into some, some of the second and third round games as well. So let's go into the uh, 5A upper state, John. Um, really, you know, what what a lot of people want to hear about. And I think, you know, we talk 5A, that's the big boys. You talk lower state, it's like, oh, it's Dutch Fork. The upper state, I think there's a lot, lot, lot of teams that can make a run to Columbia here. Yeah, this is, as I look at the bracket, this is pretty similar to um, the grouping we have in the 4A of yeah. the state bracket, where there's a lot of really good teams. Yep. And I don't know that anybody is really head and shoulders better than the other. That's right. That's right. Uh, we'll start up here with the one seeded team that I'm very high on, John. Lawrence at 8 1, host at large Blackwood at 5 5. Next, we have Burns at 9 and 1, two, two, uh, two seed out of Region 2 at uh, 9 and 1, like I said, hosting Nation Ford at 6 and 4. Then we got Sumter at 9 and 0, hosting Woodmont at 6 and 4. Rock Hill at 7 and 3, hosting Gaffney at 7 and 3, also. We've got Dorman at 10 and 0, one seed out of Region 2, hosting Greenwood at 6 and 4. We've got Spring Valley at 5 and 5, hosting Westside at 5 and 4. Clover, another undefeated team at 10 and 0, hosting Bowling Springs at 4 and 6. 
We got T. Hanna at seven and two hosting Malden at five and five. A lot of good matchups here, I think, John. Maybe not a ton. I mean, I, I mean, there's probably three or four here I like in the first round for sure. Yeah. But a lot of good ball games here, John. Let's just start with this first game, Lawrence and Blackwood. You know, Blackwood not a great year for those guys. How about the, the season that Lawrence has had? You know, those guys you know knocking off Greenwood, knocking off Westside, knocking off um, you know T. L. Hanna. You know that that team with their Wayne Martin, um, SC, uh, Mr. Football finalist there, really good running back slash linebacker, got a pretty good quarterback there. Those teams, I think, they're poised to make make a deep run there. Lawrence is. Yeah, you know, and their only loss is a little bit scary. They lost to Hillcrest twenty three to six. Yeah. But you know what? Out of a what they were nine and one. Yep. Out of ten games, you had one bad game. Eight and one. You, sorry, yeah. Eight and one. One out of nine games. You really can't blame them. Yep. Especially, you know, they they had four other wins against some pretty high quality um, playoff opponents. Mm -hmm. So I think Lawrence is a team that's kind of snuck up on us this year. Yeah. You know, a couple weeks ago, wow, look at Lawrence. Um, Here they are. Yeah. <laughs> the second matchup there, uh, Burns hosting Nation Ford. You know, I don't think this game would necessarily be close, but I kind of want to go see it because you're going to see a matchup of two really, really good running backs. Yeah. Burns running back, Rajay Harris going to East Carolina, great player there. And then uh, Nathan Mahaffey. The running back out of Nation Ford, a uh, Shrine Bowl guy, really good player as well. I don't think Nation Ford has the horses to keep up with the Rebels. Uh, I think that Rebels defense is going to be a little too tough. And then, obviously, you match that up with what Scott and Harris can do on the offensive side. But I would like to see uh, go, some, go see some of that talent there and see what Burns can do against Nation Ford. Yeah, I think Nation Ford, you know, they got a couple athletes that are, that are worth watching. But I think this is one of those, you know, Nation Ford is not – they don't have really – I don't think they have any common opponents. But you look at how Nation Floor, you, you look at their schedule, how they played this year, and then you know you look at their wins. They had two, two really good wins. I would call. Um, you know they beat Conway thirty four to six, and they beat uh, Chapin forty seven forty one overtime. Okay. So those, those are probably their two biggest wins. You flip the page over to Burns. <laughs> okay. I mean, just if you, if you make the playoffs out of that region, you know, you, you know yeah. have some pretty big wins usually. <laughs> they beat Gaffney fifty seven to thirty. They beat Malden. 43 to nothing. They beat Borland Springs, 28 to nothing. And their one loss was a two-point loss to Dorman that we Games saw. we were at, yep. And really, you know, that, that was a missed extra point mm -hmm. really was the deciding factor in that game. I mean, that was, I think you could call Dorman and Burns pretty doggone equal. Yeah. Um, they do have a couple common opponents. I know they both played Spartanburg and okay. they both beat Spartanburg. They also both played uh, Northwestern, both beat Northwestern, I believe it was, or I think, I think Northwestern's a second common opponent, I believe, between those two. But like we said, I think, um, you know, I think Burns is going to be too much for those guys. I, I, really I think they're going to blow them out. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. But I, do, I do like, I do have the running back Nation Ford has, but I don't think they've got the, the horses to beat them. Next matchup there, Sumter 9-0 against Woodmont 6-4. and You know, first off, the tough thing about this is with Sumter being in the up, upper state, if they can host home games... That's a long ride for some of these, you know, more traditional upper state areas to make down there to, to Sumter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, here, here's another issue where we have, okay, not a whole lot of common opponents, if any, here. Mm -hmm. But we've seen the teams that Sumter has played, and we see what they've done to them, mm -hmm. and it's pretty impressive. You know, they beat a Rock Hill team that, you know, a Rock Hill team that seems to hit and improved as the year went by. They beat Rock Hill 28-21. They beat a good Spring Valley team, thirty to twenty-eight, and they blew out a much improved Blue Gulf Elgin team, fifty-eight to six. Mm -hmm. um, Woodmont, you know, they've got a, they've they got, got Woodmont, a good, you know, good resume, but they played a lot of close games. Um, and the thing though, with that offense they run, kind of that wing T uh, action there with Jet Turner as the coach, that that offense can be tough to prepare for. You know, yeah. I'm not saying yeah. that they're going to beat something with something team. As really good. They've got a really good quarterback left hand. He can't remember his name right now, but good player there at Sumter. You know, I think uh, I think Sumter is going to beat Woodmont. I think it might be a little bit closer than what you expect from a one and a four seed there. I I think it might be kind of ugly. Um, really, the, the reason I say that you you look at a couple of games that Woodmont's played against quality competition, a West Side team that's not great. They're good. They're mm -hmm. a playoff team. Being thirty seven to seven, um, a TL hand team that's good. Mm -hmm. They're not great. They got blank twenty eight nothing. Okay, um, that didn't happen to Sumter this year. Um, Sumter had done very well. They beat another a Blackwood team twenty eight to seven. Um, you know, Sumter can play. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be a very very big factor in the upper state bracket. Yeah, the next matchup we come into is probably my 
probably my favorite game in the uh, Upper State 5A first round here. It's, it's really a traditional matchup, yeah. old school. Gaffney going on the road to Rock Hill. You know, yeah, Hayden Vasquez, that, thank you, J-Law, for the, for the uh, comment there with um, – the Sumter's QBs, and I cannot think of that, so thank you for getting that to me. I knew it was a left-handed kid, but yeah, thank you. Hayden Vasquez is a good player there for the Gamecocks. Gaffney going to Rock Hill, John, you know, it's crazy, you know, interesting really to think about Gaffney going on the road in the first round of a playoff game, but those yeah. guys, you know, they were really good early in the year, had some injuries. I think they're kind of starting to get healthy again, John. Gaffney is a team that nobody's going to want to play in the playoffs, I'll no. tell you that right now. No. I mean, you get the kid Andre Lindsay at QB. Stan Ellis, a wide receiver slash DB, two really good players there. You get the little John kid at linebacker, him and Ellis just committed to go to uh, Appalachian State. Some really good players there. You know, Rock Hill, while they've been kind of trending up the last couple of years, they haven't really shown up in the big games, I feel like. You know, when they've had a chance to beat somebody. You know, I, I, I will say they beat South Point last year, but obviously that's 5A, 4A for one thing. And, that, and, and that's last year. Too. And it was really more of an upset. People yeah. weren't expecting them to play yeah. for it. But when they come into a big, a big game, you know, playoffs first round last year. Um, Clover this year. Sumter this year. Yeah, they haven't really shown up in those big games. I think Gaffney's going to pull the upset here on the road over at uh, D3 Stadium. I tell you what, that would be – if the game was at the reservation, I'd say easy call. Mm -hmm. Being at District 5 Stadium, you know, Northwestern's not in the playoffs. So mm -hmm. this is this is going to be Rock Hill's big game. You know, yeah, you got South Point playing. But, you know, the Rock Hill folks are going to be out for this one. It's going to be a big stadium. It's going to be packed. Um, you know – as long as Rock Hill doesn't have one of those games where they stub their toe like they did against Clover, I think they knock off Gaffney because it's that district. Really? Um, you know, the thing, and the thing, again, that scares me about Gaffney, you know, they've been playing better, but, you know, when they play really good teams, they've gotten beat up too. You know, you look at, okay, Burns and Norman are the two best teams in the upper state. But they had no, I mean, they weren't even close yeah. to either one of those teams. You know, the best team that Rock Hill played this year, was Sumter, I think, mm -hmm. and it's twenty eight twenty one game. Yeah, uh, and you know, I think, I think Rock Hill's got a better chance of, of coming on top in this game just from okay the track record of that. Okay, okay. Our next matchup here, uh, Dorman, the team that we saw a few weeks ago, ten and zero, hosting uh, Greenwood at six and four. I think we saw the same matchup in the first round last year, John, and we said, you know, hey, maybe Greenwood can play with them. You know, got some big boys can match up with Dorman. That Dorman team is a little bit different animal this year than what they have been in the past. You know, usually they get Dorman, at least in the past several years, really big, run the ball, just going to run right in your throat. You know, this year they've really incorporated some more air rate or some more air game into that with the QB, the, the lead kid. He can really sling it, can really throw it deep. They've got some good receivers out there. Now, I'm not, now, don't get me wrong, they can still run the football and they can still oh, run yeah. it in your throat, but they're a little more multiple than what they used to be. I think they, they may pound Greenwood here and in round one. You know, we, we saw their quarterback just great play. Yep. Threw some great balls. But he had incredible awareness. Yep. Um, you know, and he was a guy, I mean, he, he could run too. He looked yeah. like, Quit. you know, Quit. I watched the, the Giants game this past, um, what mm -hmm. was that, Monday night. He kind of reminded me a little bit of Daniel Jones. A good arm, and when he needs to take off, he can take off. Okay. Um, so he was a really good player, and I think that's going to be, that's going to be tough to stop for anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, Greenwood carries that name, carries that brand. But I think Dorman, I think they take care of business. Back to Gaffney and uh, Rock Hill, Chris makes a, a mention here that their defensive leaders were injured in those games they've lost. And that's exactly oh, right now. I think the little John Keel is out, I think, for them. And, you know, I think that getting those guys healthy again, I, I think they're going to beat Rock Hill personally. But it, it should be a very good ball game there. And, and like we said, nobody wants to play Gaffney in the playoffs. I mean, that defense is always nasty. I'll tell you what. And they've got some playmakers on offense as well. You, you really, you can say the same about Rock Hill. I don't know, no, man. You're not on Rock Hill. I'm not really high on Rock Hill. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of people that go into District 5 Stadium and come out with a win. I think it's District 3 Stadium. Is that not District 3? Is it District Maybe 5? Maybe it's District 3. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, it's a big state. Dorman's going to beat Greenwood big. The next one here, um, pretty pretty uh, comparable matchup, I feel like. Westside at 5-4, going to the road to Spring Valley at 5-5. Five five. Chris asks if Spring Valley runs the wing tee. I, I don't know. I think they might, but I don't know that for sure. And they've had a couple coaching changes the last few years that I haven't really been keep up with, but... Westside getting hot at the right time. A couple big wins late for them. Um, I'm going to go really just on the principle of what their coach has been known to do in the past in the playoffs. I'm going to go with uh, Spring Valley knocking out Westside round one. Um, Little John is out for the season. Oh, man. I, I totally missed that. Sorry. I thought he was back. Yeah, it, it, is, D, it is D3 stadium as well. So thanks, Chris, for the uh, okay. updates there. Um, but, yeah, I think Spring Valley is going to beat Westside. You know, Scott Early, the, the, the same as always uh, early from the playoffs. 
Uh, so uh, <laughs> I think Spring Valley is going to keep that going, and I think they're going to beat Westside here in round one at home. Um, yeah, this is a tough one for me. I, I think both teams, from just looking at the schedules, I think they're relatively even. Okay. But I think West Side's got a little bit more on their side. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, there's. I look at probably their best. West Side's probably their best game this year. Yeah. They knocked off Woodmont thirty-seven to seven. Yeah, I think most of their, their big wins win. came in the last few weeks. They were like yeah. I said, they're getting hot now. They yeah. are. And Spring Valley, they they played a tough schedule. They played six teams that are in the in the playoffs, including Dutch Fort. And mm-hmm. um, they got beaten that game forty-nine to nothing. Really can't hold that against them. But you know they lost an I think it was an overtime game to Chapin forty-one thirty-eight. Uh, Lexington kind of beat them up 44-27. They edged out Lugo Felch in a really close game, 16-10. to But, um, you know, nothing about Spring Valley this year just really, really gets me excited. Um, you know, maybe their best game was a loss at Sumter. Yeah. 30-28. Um, to um, They're a quality team. I, I'm, I'm taking West Side in this game. Yeah. I think West okay. Side's a little bit better of a team. Our next matchup here, Clover, uh, 10-0 Region 3 champion, is taking a team – Bowling Springs at four and six. I mean, I don't even think Bowling Springs would be in the playoffs. Like, I know that, you know, they finished up um, fifth in that region. That team's not any good, John. No, like, they're I mean, not. Bowling Springs that. cannot compete with Clover. If, if they if they can, Clover is a big, big fraud if they compete with them. I think, I mean. Yeah. Cl- Clover's going to have to have a bad game to for this to be um, very competitive. Bowling Springs, the best thing about Bowling Springs is they've got that kind of uh, SEC cred to them. They've they play the toughest competition. I guess. They played yeah. six games against um, tough playoff teams. Um, yeah, that's that's the one thing going for them. Clover, they've only played two games against teams in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, that's tough. They won both of them. They did win both of them, and one of them, you know, they they beat up on Rocky Hill thirty-five to ten. But I think Clover's a better team. But um, you know, you're right. This is one of those situations where hey, somebody's got to be in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So the, the bottom team here, or the bottom game here in uh, Upper State, I'm pretty intrigued by this one too, John. We see a team that we've seen a, a few times here, Malden at five and five, going on the road to T.L. Hannah at seven and two. You know, something, something about me just, I've got a feeling that, that Malden may pull an upset here, John. Yeah, you know, again, this is kind of like the whole Greenway conversation. You know, you, you hear T.L. Hannah, you think, oh, okay, mm-hmm. they're really good. Well, eh, they're okay. Yeah, they've had a kind of down year compared mm-hmm. to the last year. You know, losing the Meredith kid, losing the Pickens kid, losing the head coach for one. You know, that, that yeah. kind of hurt them, I feel like. They've taken a couple losses that I didn't expect. Uh, and, you know, and then they finished there at that two two uh, two seed in Region 1. You know, Malden, we saw them a few times this year. I've seen them, you know, they played Hillcrest open season, got beat, you know, terribly. We thought this team is going to be uh, bad. But then they come back and they be a Greer team who turns out to not be great. Yeah. But then Malden goes on to have some pretty good, uh, yeah, pretty good other wins. Really. You know, they beat Spartanburg team that make close. They beat Bowling Springs. You know, they don't have the marquee win like they didn't beat a Gaffney, they didn't beat a Burns, they didn't beat a Dorman. But they play some of those teams tough. You know, they play Gaffney very tough. Um, so interesting to see how yeah. that game turns out. And I think Malden, I think Malden could pull the upset here in T. L. Hannah in a close ball game and set up a set up a matchup against Closer. I think they could. Um... I think T.L. Hannah Price still wins this game. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think they're just, they've got a little bit more talent. Um, but I tell you what, what really scares me though, um, you know, with T.L. Hannah, they just, they haven't looked great all year. They've had some yeah. bad games. You know, the, what really scares me the most is the Bowling Springs game. Yeah. They beat Bowling Springs 20 to 14. You know, that's, that doesn't scare anybody. Um, you know, and Malden, you know, they've played some tough competition. They've only won one of those big games against another playoff team. Um, I think it's going to be a competitive game, but I think I think Hannah pulls it off. Yeah, Chris has got Malden in a close one. He's also taking uh, – it says, wouldn't be surprised if Bowling Springs beats Clover. He must know more about Clover than I do because I think Clover's going to wipe the floor at Bowling Springs. But, uh, so looking at some of these potential round two matchups, John, we're going to see Lawrence Burns. I think it'll be a really good matchup there. We're probably going to see uh, Sumter. I think Gaffney, yeah, I think Rock Hill, uh, Dorman, and Spring Valley West. It doesn't matter there. And then Malden possibly and uh, Clover, so we'll see. I think that the marquee matchup in round two is going to be Lawrence Burns. Yeah, I think that's going to be a fun game, and the one below it too, Sumter and Gaffney, Sumter or, or Sumter Rock Hill, is going to be really good as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be a good game. Um, you know, it could be a rematch, uh, Sumter and Rock Hill, and obviously that first that first edition was pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I I think 
if Sumner does draw Rock Hill in that second round, yeah, they'll have their full attention for sure. You know, one thing I don't know if you guys have heard or not, um, Burns, their star H back slash tight end Chris Bird is out. He's having ankle surgery next week, so that kind of worries me a little bit about Burns. They still got play playmakers like Braylon Johnson and Rajay Harris, obviously, and Scott Kidd at QB, but not kind of having that safety net there. Chris Bird kind of a playmaker over the middle. A tough matchup for anybody. The kid's big and he runs so well. Having him, not having him is going to be a, you know a pretty big, pretty big blow for those guys. I think, John. Yeah, yeah, it puts a uh, puts even more of a load on Raja Harris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if I feel comfortable calling the Lawrence win over Burns, um, but I would not be surprised to see it. John, what, what do you think happens in that game? I think it's going to be a really really close game, but I think Burns, I think they, I think they win. Um, I think Burns is just overall a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that will be a close game. I think that's going to be another fourth quarter game. Yeah, yeah. And like we said, if we see, you know, do you think that Gaffney or Rock Hill could knock off Sumter around two? You know, you know, I know you said the Rock Hill stuff have already played once, but, you know, what do you think would happen there in that matchup? I think Rock Hill certainly has the ability. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've already played them once, and I'm not sure where that game was. What was that final score that would be happy there? 28-21 okay. was the final okay. of that game. Um, so I think, you know, they certainly do. And then, hey, if, if Gaffney can pull off the win, I think they've certainly got a shot. You know, yep. Gaffney's kind of been one of those – a little more hot and cold. You mm -hmm. know, they they blew out for them in the springs, but then, you know, when they played really good teams like Gaffney and and um, Dorman. Yeah. Well, like I said, they had some you know, had some injuries those yeah. games, which is yeah. that's part of it, obviously. But, you know, also, you know, also they, they blew out a Greenwood team. Four yeah. Nine to six. So I, I think it'd be good. I think Sumner wins that game too, no matter who they play. But I think that would be a very good game to watch as well. Oh, got a comment here from Jay Law. It says Sumter's missing their uh, really good athlete, Tony McCall, at torn ACL. That's a big blow for those guys. Ooh. He was a, he was a really good player for them. And then Chris thinks that Burns will beat Lawrence by 30. I don't think they'll beat him by that many. Ooh. But uh, I, I, I'm just going to say it, John. I, I mean, think, I think we're, <laughs> they beat Gaffney by 27. I think I think we're looking at Burns <laughs> and Dorman rematch here on Thanksgiving weekend. I mean, we saw how good that game was, how close those teams were. I think we're going to see a rematch between Burns and Dorman on November 29th over, uh, over at Dorman. Yeah, I think um, I think that Sumner Burns game mm -hmm. is going to be really, really good. Those two teams match up, matched up last year. You know, uh, Burns winning down there in Sumter, and they'd have to go down to Sumter again this year as well. Yeah, but it sounds like Sumter's got a little bit more of a serious injury on their side yeah. than Burns does. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I, you know, I still like Burns getting to the Upper State Championship as well. And, yeah, I just, on that lower part of the bracket, I just don't know that there's enough horsepower from anybody to, to knock off Dorman. So that brings us back to that matchup again, John. I know we, I know we watched it. Those those teams were so even over there at Nixon Field that night. Like we said, you know, Burns missed an early extra point. They were chasing that point the rest of the game. That's why they were down yeah. by two. Yeah. You know, do you think that that Burns Burns has enough, you know, ammo now to flip the script, or do you think Dorman's going to kind of pull off a pull off a victory and, and head over to Columbia for a state championship? I still stick with Dorman, and you know, not having Burns going to be a real big issue mm -hmm. in that game. Um, you know, to be able to have that little bit of change of pace back there for them. I think Dorman wins the game, but I think it's going to be another game. We're talking about high school football here. You know, it's... Who knows, you, yeah. You could have a game yeah. where, you know, you have a couple fumbles. Maybe you have a, you know, a snap go over the punter's head. It can completely change the game. The game that we saw, it was an extra point that changed the game. You know, yeah, maybe Dorman wins the game anyways. That's true. But, you know, that makes it... Totally yeah. different landscape. So I think Dorman still wins, but you know, one play, one play could change yeah. it all around. You know, I, I think we're gonna flip it. I think Burns is gonna win this ball game. You know, kind of looking back at it, John, we talked about it that night. Dorman and Burns both, but really Dorman, they had some touchdowns on some long third down plays. Yeah, I think they did really they did. count on again. That's true. You know, they, they hit a couple long play, long pass plays where Burns just got beat deep, which you don't expect to see happening again. And then you think about Dorman's final touchdown there. It was a fourth and five, fourth and six. They run a reverse pass. Yeah, that was a I mean, call. that's the play. I mean, like, yeah, what do you expect to happen there? And I think Burns, if, if they just stick with the ground game and stick with Harris and keep running Rajay, maybe even some swing passes out there too, I think Burns, in a close one, I think is going to flip the script and win this game in Dorman. You know, it, and I believe it was the Burns SID telling us that night that, you know, he, we talked to him after the game, mm -hmm. and he wasn't that concerned about it because he said typically the way that it goes – you know, the Burns Gaffney or the Burns Dorman game, whoever wins the regular season matchup typically loses the, one the, in the other one yeah. wins in the playoffs. So, yeah. you know, if, if history repeats itself, you know, you're right. And I, I think as much as I like that Dorman quarterback, mm -hmm. 
Roger Harris is the best player on the field. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, that, that could be the difference. Yeah. I got a couple more comments over here. Uh, Jay said that uh, the, the McCall kid from Sumter is actually a Georgia Southern commander. I know that's he'll be playing with uh, Michaeli Colasardo from Chapman, uh, the QB there, both go to Georgia Southern. Very cool. Chris got some predictions here. Chris thinks Woodmont beats Sumter and Gaffney beats Rock Hill in round one. Wow. That would flip up the bracket a little bit there, wouldn't it? Uh, that so, would be very interesting to see that happen in round one. So, what a Woodmont Gaffney second round game? Yeah, that's what he's got after there, Woodmont and Gaffney. And I think. So, that game would be at the reservation then. Uh, would it not? Because yep, Gaffney three. Seat, three. Yeah, yep, they would be hosting that one if we got Boy, that. Boy, if that around. happened, then I would take Gaffney um, probably playing Burns yeah. in the third round. Yeah. Um, I know Gaffney would love another shot at the, the Rebels. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I I feel like that would be a team that would have a chip on their shoulder, you know? After yeah. getting beat up like they did that first game. So, you know, John, do, do you think that any team that comes out of this, whether it's Dorman or whether it's Burns or Sumter or, you know, Clover or Gaffney, whoever it is, do you think any of those guys have enough firepower to beat Dutch Fork? If we, you know, if we, I know you pick Fort Dorchester, but just for the sake of of the chalk here and the number one team, Dutch Fork, do you think either one of them have the firepower to to beat a Dutch Fork team? I think they do. Okay. Um, yeah, I think be it Dorman, I, I think their quarterback play mm-hmm. and I think the coaching. Yeah, you know, some Dutch Hall is a great made, coach there. And, and you know, we talk about. Wow, third and long, they hit some good plays. How many times do you see? And you see college and NFL teams do it. Yep. A third and long, they you know they take their medicine, run it up the middle for a couple yards, and they punt. Mm-hmm. Not Norman. They trust their guys, and I think players got to love that. And that yeah. gives them a ton of confidence. And when you're talking about 17, 8 year old kids, instilling that confidence in them, that's huge. Yep. And, you know, if, I think Norman, you know, if you get a couple things go your way um, – I think they certainly have a chance. And I think Burns with, you know, they've got great quarterback play. You know, and we saw the changes that they made in that Dorman game. Yeah. To, to battle back and make that a very, very good ball game. I think they've got, um, you know, all the ingredients to give Dutch Fork all they want. Um, you know, especially Raja Harris. You yeah. Know, this uh, is one of those, I think that either one of those teams that gets there, I don't think you're going to want to try to speed it up and, and outscore Dutch Fork. I think you're going to want to try to get maybe get a little sloppy with it. Get a little messy and keep it more of a, a 20, 30 point kind of ball game there. I like can that in that range there. Like if I'm if I'm Burns, I'm feeding Rajay all night. You know, and I think that Burns defense might be the difference. It's in, very good. It would help them out against Touch Fork a lot. I think uh, you know, I don't think you want to get Scott out there slinging around 30, 40 times against Touch Fork. I think you want to kind of keep it yeah. keep it a little more conservative and, and give it to Rajay and just see what happens uh, is how I would kind of coach against Touch Fork. And especially with Burns, you know, if you can keep the ball out of you know, Olin Chuck's hands. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can keep the ball away from Dutch Fork too, uh, you know, that's a big deal. Yeah, they got a great defense. Yep. But I think I would put the Dutch Fork offense a little bit ahead of their defense. Yeah, uh, I mean I, Olin Chuck and Hyatt are, are so good, man. Those are that's yeah. a great connection you know, there, those guys can, have. Yeah, if you can keep keep the ball out of their hands a little bit and, and you know, and test that defense a little mm-hmm. bit that hasn't really been tested. And I don't we know Mallard Creek's a good program. You know, I don't know too much about the state of North Carolina mm-hmm. this year. Who's great? Who's there? But you kind of feel like Dorman and Burns could give Mallard Creek all they wanted. If they I mean, Gaffney did. You know, Gaffney gave Mallard Creek a way little ball game uh, early in the year there with some injuries that night too. You know, and it I was think, raining that game. I know that you know that was right. The it weather could have been a factor. game. That's right. That's right. Hey, you never know what's gonna be what's gonna be like in Columbia. Um, yeah, and uh, so John, I, I mean. Let's go back to 4A and 5A here. Let's pick our champions, if that's cool. Yeah, let's, let's do that. that. Let's get a, give a quick shout-out here to, to our guys that are tuning in. I see we've got Chris and Jay over there. Thank you guys for commenting so much and, and keeping everybody um, keeping everybody kind of kind of up to date on, with some, some some feedback that we love. You know, we needed you guys' help, so I appreciate yeah, you guys yeah, helping we, us out a couple of those comments. Thanks for the injury here. report. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't know a few of those things. appreciate you guys tuning in. I know we've seen uh, Brett and Randy in there. We've seen Brian in there. We've seen Q Sparks in there. Haley, a lot, a lot of people in there checking us out, so... Thank you guys for that. Uh, if you don't follow us on Twitter, follow us at Move and Change M O V I N C H A I N S. If we're uh, if we if we go okay more, we'll do some more live tweets as we go through it. Uh, but check us out on there. Check check us out on YouTube. Check us out on an audio version on, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Spreaker, wherever. So check us out there. Uh, also check out our sponsor, the Georgia Agency, GeorgiaAgency.net, Georgia Agency on Facebook. They got all your insurance needs. Uh, life help uh, for a business owner if you need that as well check those guys out and check out our friends at always on top clothing 
as well. Always on top brand, always on top clothing on Facebook and Instagram. Buy your shirts today. They got some more cool products coming out soon. So if you don't like this one, like the page and uh, so you'll see the new ones they have when those guys come out as well. So, John, let's look at 4A here. Let's pick our champion. Actually, I want to make a comment. You know, I got cut off last night before I got to say this. So, I know we've picked on the prep poll a lot over the last week we've been doing this about how it's, you know, none of those riders have seen every team. Yeah. None of them know that much. What I think is so funny, John, and it just, <laughs> I just don't get it, is it literally in every classification, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, not in 1A, but all the other four classifications, there is a unanimous number one team. <laughs> unanimous. I was like, so yeah. you're telling me a Barnwell team in 2A or a Southside Christian team in 2A or a uh, Chapman team, sorry, not Chapman, I guess a Chester or a Camden or an Ainer team or even a Dillon team in 3A shouldn't get a vote or a team like a... Um, you know, who had the best win in 3A? Ainer. That's right. Yeah, that's that, right. Deserves a, that deserves one yeah. vote. Yeah, or you're telling me an undefeated team like a South Point in 4A or even, you know, a uh, Daniel in a 4A or a yeah. four in 4A. None of those teams can get a single vote for first place. I, I mean, I, I mean, come it. on. I, I don't get it. it. And then 5A, same type of deal there, you know. Dutch Fort, while you know, people think they're the best, they don't have that many great wins on their resume. None. In all honesty. I think I that Dorman win over Burns is the best win in the state anybody's got all year. Yeah, I agree. Like, really. But you're telling me Dorman can't get a first place vote? Like that poll, like I just don't get it. You know, and, and I know we've talked about John doing our own poll here, but I mean it was the kind of same issues where we don't see everybody play either. So we don't I mean what's the point of us doing it? Because we don't know necessarily any more about some of those teams down the, you know, down certain areas of the state either. But I just find that funny and, and I think I'd be very surprised if we see all four of those unanimous number ones win the state championship. That would be uh I don't know what the line in Vegas is on that, but I would I would go against that as well. Yeah, let's take a quick look here at uh, 4A Lower State. John, who do you have come out of 4A Lower State? Well, <laughs> after all that talk, I'm still going to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. Yeah. Um, it's hard not to. I think Myrtle Beach, like we said, is probably you know the best team in that, in that lower half of the bracket for sure. And, and I don't see a team besides maybe Brooklyn KC who maybe could push them for that. I think you know even Lower, lower Richland – is a one seed at six and four. It's kind of some pools gold there. I, um, I think that Tuscany is going to be the second round with Myrtle Beach. I think that'll North be North Augusta game. Sorry, you're misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, good ball game there between those two. I think whoever plays at Myrtle Beach there. So I think Myrtle Beach comes out of the lower state as well. John, who do you have for your upper state four uh, A champion? This is a lot, lot tougher. Uh, I'm still going to go with Daniel, but you know, if it's honestly, if it's Ren, I'm not going to be that surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and that's I don't have a whole things. lot of faith in Greenville right now. Um, you know, I think Ridgeview's got a really good team, though. Um, you know, South Point's going to be – they're going to be a tough out. Mm -hmm. um, but I still – I'm going to go with Daniel. I think they've got the – I think they've got the ability to make it all the way through. Yeah, like all those teams you mentioned, like I said, can get there. I think that upper state 4A is really tough. I think Ridgeview – I don't know why. I just got a feeling those guys are ready after kind of falling a little bit short last year. I could see it. I think we see Ridgeview, Myrtle Beach – Who's your state champion out of those two, John, uh, of the matchup you've got there with Daniel and Myrtle Beach? I'm still going to take Myrtle Beach. I think they're yep. just the better overall team. And, you know, the dirty factor is a big deal. Yeah, I'm going to agree. You know, it's so hard to repeat as a state champion. Um, there's so much turnover in high school football, kids graduate and then whatnot, and, you know, things like that happening. And just you're, you're doing 16, 17, 8-year-old kids. I mean, it's hard for them to, to be at their best every single night. But – I'm going to go with Myrtle Beach, and that's for the primetime game on December 7th, too. That's 6.30 kickoff there under the lights of williams Rice. So I think it'll be a great ball game if we see uh, Myrtle Beach and Ridgeview, and I think Myrtle Beach will be the champion. So and I'll tell you what, you know, I say Daniel, but if it's Myrtle Beach Ridgeview, if it's, you know, Myrtle Beach Wren, yep. Myrtle Beach South Point, they're all going to be pretty, pretty good games. Yes, yes. So back to 5A Lower State. I know you, 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 you talked about Fort Dorchester pulling an upset there, John. Do you believe in that, or, or what do you think happens to your lower state champion? I'm doing that more for fun, but, <laughs> you know, I'll stick with it. Okay. I'll stick with it. I think I've got to go to Dutch Fort. I don't know how I don't, so I'm going to go with those guys. Upper state, who do you like? You know, I like Dorman. Um, you do? Okay. If if Burns was 100% healthy, it would take me longer to decide that, but I still think it's Dorman. Um and I tell you what, though, I think they're going to have a really tough game um, with uh, with either Burns or Dorman, or uh, yeah. Sutter, rather, or Lawrence. Who knows? Yeah, that's the you know I want to pick Burns here. I've got 
I know that the, the region one compared to region uh, two competition level is a little bit lower for, for region one Lawrence. I've got a feeling that Lawrence may get Burns all they want in round two, which kind of worries that, yeah. me. But I'm still going to go with Burns to win the upper state championship. Going with history. Yeah, going, going with Burns again. I like it. So we got a Dutch Fort Burns matchup, Dutch Fort Door matchup for you, John. Who do you like out of those? Uh, out of that matchup, Fort Dorchester. Fort Dorchester, God, Dorman. you're all over the place, John. <laughs> um, gosh, I tell you what, if someone knocks off Dutch Fork, they got to be riding a super high wave. Yeah, going yeah. into Columbia. Um, I have not seen Fort Dorchester play. Okay, but I find it hard to believe there's someone out there that much better than Burns. They, yeah, they could beat Dorman. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go Dorman. Okay, I like it. I'm gonna stay right in the same region. I'm going Burns to win it. Okay, I just don't think Dutch Ford is gonna repeat. I don't know why. I think that I think you know everybody talks about Burns and how good that offense is. High power, Braylon Johnson, and you know Chris Bird until he's out now. Rajay Harris, Mark Scott. That Burns defense is one of the best units in the state. I think. A, and I like the way they play. Yeah, you know, they got they got Quentin Talley out of the corner, really good player there. Josh Bird, Chris's brother, playing there. Uh, he's super good player. I think that Burns defense is going to be the difference. They're very, they they attack. They're very aggressive, mm -hmm. um, and you don't see them make a ton of mistakes. Either. No, you don't. You don't. You know, Coach Reggie Shaw has, has a very disciplined team over there. I think that could be a. Uh, I mean, all those all these games are going to be, be great ball games. Yeah. In all honesty, and he, you know, we talked about earlier. You know that last touchdown for Dorman. You know, it, it was a trick play, and one of the most beautifully <laughs> executed trick plays I've seen. Yeah, never saw it coming. Never saw it coming, but John, uh, anything else you want to hit on here? I wouldn't mind since we kind of got cut off last night. Uh, going back through and saying our three A and two A and one A winners. How do you feel about that? Yeah. If I can not get this screen to do what I wanted to do. Which one's on here? Okay, that's upper state. So it's this one. John, they're all on here. Well. <laughs> you know, I can't one. get any of them all. <laughs> the machines are taking control. Oh my god! <laughs> all right, this one's up front, so let's put it. Let's take it off. What's up front right now? Dutch Fork is, which is right here. So let's cut them out. We are constantly improving our technology, but um, yes, we've got the. Yeah. Anyway. So, John, let's just uh, – you banter for a second and talk about some of your great so great thoughts from the season. We're going to talk about uh, – what are we going to talk about first? 3A, 1A. Look at that. Look, we're back here. We're back live again. Sorry for making you guys dizzy there probably. <laughs> so, John, I'll tell you, my 1A picks – you know, we got a lot of good comments on the, on the game or on the, on the video last night of people who were – you know, who they thought was going to win who wasn't. Um, I think out of lower state, 1A, I think I've got to go with Green City Floyds, the defending champion there. I think they're going to make it back to Columbia as a lower state champion. Who do you like there? I think uh, I think you're right. I'm going to agree with Green City Floyds, hmm. and I'm going to have them knocking off Lamar in that game. Really? You got Green City um, Floyds beating Lamar. I like that pick. I do. Um, I've got a strange feeling Wagner Sally is going to make a run this year. I think they got a good program there. I still think Green City Floyds repeats. But I think Wagner Sally is going to give him a give him a good ball game there um, in the final at Benedict College on Friday, December sixth at eight Friday night p.m. So John, let's go to two A now. Any last minute thoughts on that before we kind of get into the picks here? Um, I tell you what, the more I look at it, the more I want to pick Lamar. <laughs> but um, I'll stick with it. Okay, okay, two A. I'll go first here on two A. Lower State. You know, lower state, it's so weird when we talk about Ocean Side Collegiate and their whole fiasco and how they now are a four seed and whatnot. Um, we talk about how good Bamberg Gearhart can be, how good Timberland is, how good Barnwell is. You know, I think we're going to see a, a Barnwell matchup against Ocean Side Collegiate here for the lower state final. I think Barnwell's going to pull it off. I think the Warhorses are going back to Benedict. And I think in the upper state, you know, I, I like Southside Christian a lot. I really do. I like Abbeville a little bit more. I think. Yeah. I think we see Abbeville Barnwell again. And I think the Warhorses pulled the upset this year. I think uh, the Pender kid, Pender kid's ready at QB. Uh, Deshaun Watson on defense is ready for those guys. Some good, good, good players on the outside. Good line up there for, for Barnwell. I think the Warhorses are going to beat Abbeville for the state championship this year. I'm going to still take – I think it's going to be that same matchup, but I'm still going to take Abbeville. Okay. 
And I think as good as that Abbeville Barnwell game will be, mm-hmm. I think the toughest game that Abbeville is going to have in the upper state bracket is going to be in that second round against Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be a really, really good game with um, Abbeville and AJ there. Yep. Okay, and then finally, uh, 3A, a, a bracket I'm really excited about. It's going to be a lot of I mean, I mean really, the lower half and upper half are both pretty good. I think I like the, uh, the upper half a little bit better. My lower state, I mean, John, that lower up, they're both, they're both great here. Like this is this is and this one's pretty even as far. This may as be the most competitive bracket both both have. Yes, in yeah, all I agree. agree. And, um, and it's pretty balanced with your um, top ten teams. You mm-hmm. got four coming out of the upper state and six mm-hmm. coming out of the lower state. Yeah, I think my lower state champion uh, is going to be Dylan. I think that loss to Ainer woke them up. Yeah, I think they're they're going to roll through the playoffs. And I know that Wade Hampton around two could be tough for those guys. Gilbert's always a tough team, but but Dylan's handled them pretty well pretty well over the years. I don't know if I see Ainer even match up with Dylan again. I think Strom Thurman uh, will be, will give Ainer all they want if it's right there, or maybe May River maybe even well. uh, maybe even you know yeah May River or, or Battery Creek there in that third round matchup. Something like that. I think that I think we're gonna see Dylan come out of the lower state. Yeah, I think uh, I could see Dylan playing Strom Thurman for that lower state championship. Okay, uh, I think Dylan wins that game. I think you know I agree with you. I think they've They've gotten a little bit of a wake up call with mm-hmm. that loss at Ainer. Um, you know, I think they I think they avenged that pretty well. And then upper state three A, uh, this is just one I mean, just like the lower state. I mean, there's just so many teams you could pick. Like I talked about four A upper state a minute ago. I mean, you could easily pick a Pendleton, a Chapman, a Chester, Union County, a Camden. I mean, any of the, any of these teams could could certainly make it to Columbia and have a chance to win a state championship. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, I've had I've had a pretty big crush on Chapman all year. <laughs> it's hard not to, man. I mean, Those guys score fifty points a game. Very exciting. And, and, they're having a bad game. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, having a QB like I was talking about East Eastside earlier, having a QB that's been there before, that's a veteran. You know, he's his, the kid's a senior. Colosardo is. He's a very good. Player. He's he's as good as anybody in the state. Yeah, I think I he's a strong bowl kid there. Uh, you know, I think he it's him and Doty. I think from South Carolina and Venables too. Venables is kind of a DB as well. Um, you know, uh, Chris has got a Dylan Ainer rematch in Lower State. We'll be now, what I was trying to do, I, like, I think game. Ainer's going to go down before that. But, yeah, that turtle yeah. offense going. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I think, so I think, uh, you know, it's Colasardo and Doty at QB for, for the Shrine Bowl team. Even Olin Chuck, I don't think he even made it out of the Dutch Four kids there. So. Well, you know, um, Mike Lee might be telling him, hey, don't play that game. That's right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. but, but I think, um, like you said, Chapman with Michaela Colasardo is going to be a tough out for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, but, you know, <laughs> Those are going to be some tough, tough games when, you know, they catch Chester, Union, mm-hmm. Camden. A lot of good games there. I think Chapman comes out, too. I think they are just far too strong. Um, you know, when I say a close game, I'm, I'm thinking like a 10-point game. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and uh, you know the way that the bracket shakes out, I could see them. I, I think they'll meet up with Camden mm-hmm. for the Upper State Championship, and I okay. think that'll be a very competitive fourth-quarter game. Yeah. I think Chapman's just better. What do you think about our defending 3A champion, Chester? You know, they got a little bit lucky last year. Okay. Um, you know, they caught a break in the in the Camden game with a late turnover. Um, I, I think Chester's a really good team, and I think that will give Chapman a tough, tough bout um, early. That would be that would be a second-round game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that will be a tough, tough game. And I think that will kind of give, give Chapman maybe a little bit of a wake-up call if they mm-hmm. win that game by, you know, say two scores. But, um, again, I think – Chapman's just better. Yeah, yeah. And I think Chapman's going to beat Dylan in the state championship. Yeah, I think uh, I think for Upper State, we're going to see Chapman against the team they open the season with, Union County. Oh. I think Union County with Kashawn Glover is going to make a run uh, to thanks people weekend matchup against Chapman. I think Chapman wins, and I think Chapman takes down Dylan uh, for the championship, the same as you there, John. Yeah. Now, how close do you think that game will be? Oh, um... Ten points. Ten points. Chapman by ten. I, what do you think? Yeah, I think seven to ten point game. Um, I think you know it'll be a close game, maybe uh, maybe a three point game, and Chapman gets a touchdown late to, to make it a ten point game. But it's okay. gonna be it's gonna be a tight one all the way through. Yeah. Well, so thank you guys for tuning in and, and staying with us the whole time. We've had a lot of viewers literally all all episode long, so you guys were just sticking around, and I appreciate it. Thanks for all the um, comments. That makes it fun. Yeah, Chris and Jay, thank you guys for getting in there with some good comments. So it, it certainly helped us out. Uh, and love seeing the commentary there. Amy had some comments early as well. So, you know, feel free to like this and, and kind of help us, you know, share it and tell your friends. I mean, this show, 
If you guys are tuning in for your first time, what we do all season long is basically Friday nights, about 10, 30, 11, we kind of come back here or, or somewhere and we go live and we give you the high school football scores from around the state. I mean, you know, there's nobody else doing that. There's a couple radio shows, uh, you know, one down in the low country and one up here in Delta to do that. But, I mean, you can't pick those up in Columbia if you, you know, you can't pick up the Greenville scores in Columbia from that guy. So, you can watch us literally all across the state and it's Facebook Live, so you can check it out however you want. We've got scores from everywhere in the state and uh, we'll give it to you every Friday night, we, we, along with kind of a breakdown of what we saw that night, along with some some previews of what's coming up the next week. So. Love to have you guys tune in, um, you know, for the rest of the playoffs and for everything we're going to do for that. And it'll also go into the 2020 season as well. So, John, anything to add to that, I guess? Yeah, thanks for all our viewers. Thanks for everybody making comments. You know, um, there's a radio show also in the Midlands. It's very good, but it's mm -hmm. it's more mainly, uh, you know, focused on the Midlands area. But it's great having guys from, you know, tuning in and giving us comments from around the state. Because we're... We don't get to go to these games in yeah. the North State. We don't get to go to these games in the Rock Hill area and the, the Midlands area. Yep. So it makes our, makes this even better than those other shows because we've got more input from, from around the state. So keep that coming in. We, we don't do this because we think we know it all. We, we do it because it's fun. When we um, thought that it was needed. I mean, that was it. Yeah. You know, and, and mentioning a couple of those shows, John, the one up here, we, get, we give, give them a hard time because literally <laughs> they just talk about nonsense in their sponsors – for five minutes at a time. And I'm not exaggerating. It's, it's, not, sometimes a, it's not about that. football. You know, obviously, you know, we, we hit up the Georgia Agency for a minute here. We talk about them for 30 seconds or, or a minute or whatever it is. But then we get back to scores. And we're not interviewing a uh, ABCD tech professor for 20 minutes in the middle of the, the football show. I mean, people, when, we, when they get in their cars after a football game, they want to hear football scores. And that's what we want to give you over and over again. So thank you guys for helping us. You know, if you don't follow us on Twitter, do that at Moving Chains. Also, subscribe on Apple and, and all those things that help us get the podcast out there as well. You know, some friends who requested that, who maybe listened to it on the drive to work or whatever, we make an audio-only version for you guys there as well. I've got a couple comments I want to run through. Um, Mark says he thinks a rematch from last year, Lamar Wagner-Sally. He thinks Wagner-Sally wins this year uh, to go to the state championship. I think he, I think we, he agrees with that. You know, we've heard that before from others. Yep, yeah, I got you there, Mark. Uh, we've got Chris a couple comments. Chris says, we're gonna do this throughout the playoffs, John. I'm down if you are. At least, yeah. At least the first couple of rounds. You know, once it gets down to the third and fourth round, where there's only a couple games. Maybe we won't because only three or four scores a night. But yeah, I think tomorrow night we got something going on. Um, you guys asked what game we're going to, John. Do you, have you thought looked at one that you think might be great? Um, yeah. Obviously, I, I think the weather is gonna be a big factor for two. If it's pouring rain, sorry guys, I'm not getting out in it. I mean, probably not. <laughs> but if the weather's nice, you know, there's a handful I like a lot. I mean, you look at this Fairfield Central Union County game in, in, in round one, could be a really yeah. good ball game and there. It, you know, Dorman and Greenwood is intriguing. Uh, and I haven't been to a game in, in Dorman University this yep. year either. I think Westwood Eastside could be a well of a ball game there, John yes, talked about. Uh, that would so. be a good one. And then I think, um, you know, even uh, even Rock Hill or Gaffney Rock Hill. I don't know if we'll make the the the, uh, the trip over to D three Stadium, but that's a game that it's not too far. We could do that possibly, John. It might, it might give give us kind of a later start on uh, the show.